Hey guys, I know what you're probably thinking. Where the heck have you been? It's been over four weeks, not a video, not an update, nothing. What's going on with the project? Well, to be honest, I don't really have any excuse. I hit a hurdle in the model and I lost interest. Sometimes this happens, I'll get to a spot in the model where I can't figure out how to get through it. And I spend so much time trying to figure out how to get through it that I just lose interest in the model. So I had some stuff going on in the family, lost somebody that was close to me, and I've been spending a lot of time outdoors because I got some new fishing gear and a new mountain bike. And honestly, it just, it seemed like everything else was more fun than building models. But uh, about a week ago, something happened that got me reinvigorated in the model project. I picked up this thing. You're thinking, what, what does an excavator have to do with the 988 project? Well, I didn't intend on doing any modifications to this model, but when I got it, I realized that there was this little fella sitting in the cab. I don't like these. I don't know why diecast masters insist on putting figurines inside the cabs of their models, but I don't like it. So I was like, I'll just take it out. I thought it was going to be something simple because on the newer diecast models or diecast master models, it seems like it's pretty easy to get these guys out. Well, that wasn't the case with this model. As you can see, he has got something he should probably see the doctor for going on here. And that had him planted firmly into the seat. So when I took him out of the seat, I noticed that there was a hole in the seat and can just leave the hole in the seat. So that hole has to get filled. And I keep, I refer to a book frequently throughout this, this series or any of the videos that I do. And it's called, if you give a mouse a cookie, it's one of my favorite childhood books. And the reason why is because the book kind of exemplifies that nothing in life is simple. The, book starts out as if you give a mouse a cookie, you have to give it a glass of milk. If you give it a glass of milk, you have to give it a straw. And that's kind of how every model building project goes. If you take the guy out of the seat, he's going to leave a hole. If he leaves a hole, you got to patch the hole. And then you realize that the interior is shiny black. The interior for the real machine is not shiny black. So I ended up taking and repainting the interior. I used a uh, primer because it was the closest to the cat gray that I could find and then I hand painted the black details in there and used a little bit of masking tape to kind of keep the edges square and then when I was looking over the rest of the model I realized that the rear engine cover had some paint damage to it and I think it was because the styrofoam was pressed against it for such a long period of time because this is a 2015 model. It probably was thrown around quite a bit in the warehouse. And I think that just ended up goofing it up. And I also noticed that it was missing a railing on the side. I saw two little holes in there and was trying to figure out what those were. And when I looked at photos of it, I realized that there was a rail, a grab rail missing. So I needed to reinstall that as well. And before you know it, I was back in it. I was building a model. I was customizing a model and building parts for it and getting it all put back together. And to be honest, I'm very, very pleased with the results. Um, it was really fun because I got to relearn a bunch of new guy mistakes, uh, things like order of operation for putting it back together, remembering how you took it apart and issues with paint. I had to redo a few parts because I goofed them up and I ended up losing a screw, dropped it on the ground, had to search around for that. I could have put those in a tray and I would have avoided that problem. But all in all, it got me re-interested in building models. And in the interim, when I was looking at the part that I'm having issues with on the 988, which we'll go over in a minute here, um, I realized it really wasn't that big of a deal that I can figure it out quite easily. and. Uh, reach out for help if I need to and, and get it done. So before we get onto that, I'll just show you guys the uh, the excavator model because this is kind of not really my normal style of piece for a collection, right? I tend to go for stuff in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, not something that was released by Caterpillar within the last 10 years. But there's something about this model that I just really like. I saw it in the uh, catalog that diecast masters sends out and there's something about a 35 ton excavator with a d5 size blade on the front of it that just piqued my interest i thought it was really cool and 
now that I've got the interior looking more like the way it should, I know the seats aren't black, but fun fact, you can order a plain black seat from Cat if you want. Um, I just like it. I think it's a cool model. It's, it's unique. Uh, I think if you took the blade off of it, it probably wouldn't have gotten my attention. And when I looked online for reference photos for how to fix the uh, grab rail that I rebuilt on the other side, I noticed that maybe one in 20 of these things in the classified section actually had the blade on it. So it seems to be a pretty rare configuration. And it fits nicely on my Trail King trailer, which is pulled by the Norscott T800. I grabbed this a few years ago. The MSRP on this thing was really low for a truck and a trailer, and I didn't have any other in my collection. This is actually the only one that I have. So I picked it up, but these things seem to hold their value pretty well, which is kind of funny. But yeah, that's it. That's, that's me getting back into the hobby. So let's take a look at the 988 project. Between the last video and when I completely dropped the ball on this project, I ended up finishing up some little odds and ends with the undercarriage and getting the splash guard slash transfer case guard finished and just some little odds and ends. I was planning on moving on to the rear engine covers as the next portion of the project, but there was something nagging me and that it was that I needed to continue building off of the main frame that I built. And as somebody astutely pointed out in one of the previous videos, the cab for the 988 is pretty bad. No real fault of Ertl. They were trying to design a, a product that could be used by kids in the sand as a toy, but would also look good enough to go on the shelf. And in order to make this cab tough, you need to cast it thicker. And in order to cast this on a, something of a low budget, you can't have a whole lot of detail in there. So if you were to compare this against the very well detailed cab of the 992, you would see some glaring differences. Now the 992 and the 988 actually used the same cab, but the one on the 992 sits up a little bit higher than the one on the 988. They just positioned it on the platform a little bit higher. But the 988 cab in real life doesn't actually sit on a platform like this one does. It's mounted directly to this frame and sits elevated off the frame with a couple large brackets. So I was trying to figure out what to do with this cab and how to make it more detailed. My original idea was going to be just to cut the back off of this, make a new cab guard, and then maybe file these out a little bit to make the windows bigger and then cut plastic in shape and drop it in there like I typically do. But I was still really annoyed by how deep that portion is right there and how thick these pillars are between the pieces of glass. And then also how large the gaskets are around the windows. And you can see that I had painted mine previously to make them look a little bit more realistic. But that still wasn't accurate enough for me. I figured if I put as much time in the rest of the model as I did, why cut corners and reuse the old cab? <laughs> I've, I've built the most of this thing from scratch as it is. Might as well finish the show. So then came the problem of, well, how do I make the cab really detailed and out of brass and get these tiny pillars? At first I thought I would cut out individual pieces of brass and solder them together, but putting them at an angle and keeping those pillars thin would have posed a really big problem. It became obvious pretty quick that the best course of action for doing this would be the same way that Cat did it on the bigger ones, and that was to make this entire front piece out of one sheet of brass, well, steel in their case, cut the holes into it, and then bend it into shape. And that was my problem. In order to do that, there's angles between here that you have to figure out. And I I have high school math as my, as my top. I may seem like I have a college education to some people, but I don't. I have a few college classes under my belt for public speaking and English and things that I actually use in my day-to-day -day life and in my job, but I do not have 
any fantastic math skills. Math is definitely a challenge for me. Um, and the engineering required to figure this out is, is actually relatively advanced stuff. I, I talked to a friend of mine who was an engineer and had him try to explain it to me and the geometry involved in figuring out the angles for the rake and basically there's a lot of math that I didn't know how to do. And that frustrated me and I didn't want to continue with it until I figured out how to solve that problem. And in that interim, I ended up getting really bored with it. Well, I was having a conversation with a friend and he was like, hey, how else? What, what method do you do to normally figure that kind of stuff out? Because you seem to do a lot of really complex stuff out of brass. And I said, well, I usually make an overlay or I just kind of do it out of cardboard. And then the light bulb went on as we were having that conversation. And he was like, why don't you just do that for the cab? I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's probably a really good idea. So here's what I ended up doing was just hitting this with some more marker, took a piece of paper, a little bit thicker, laid it over and then pressed it in and got the impression of this and then I took a compass and measured the angle of the bottom of these windows in comparison to the angle on the bottom of this piece and figured out that in order to make a flat piece line up like this one when I bend it these needed to be three degrees angled up on each side so that's the next step in the project is to reteach myself some uh, online or drawing because these are going to have to be really exact and um, going to have to machine that out onto brass, which we already know how to do. So that's where we're at in the project. Um, this is pretty much a, a very live update. Uh, by the time you guys see this, I'll probably be going to bed and um, be getting started on this one relatively soon here. So. I appreciate you guys subscribing and, and viewing my videos and hanging in there with me because I know I'm not the most consistent poster, but that's just the way projects like this go. Sometimes you lose interest in it because you hit a hurdle and you choose to occupy yourself with other stuff. If this was my day job, if I got to do this for a living, these hangups wouldn't really be happening because um, this ends up feeling like work when I get to these hurdles. And I don't want to treat this project like work because it will, I'll get demotivated. And if I try to work on it when I'm not interested in it, I'm just going to cut corners and half-ass it. And you guys don't want to see that. I want to produce good looking stuff. I don't want to produce something that in a couple of weeks, I'm going to come back and go, oh, man, why'd you do it that way? So thanks for hanging in there, guys. Uh, let's try to get some, some more regularly scheduled videos going on here. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take care. Adios.